Hi everybody, it's me, Ardalis, and in this quick video I'm going to show you what's new in my Clean Architecture template version 9.1.2. So here's the latest version of the repo. We have about 14,500 stars, which is pretty awesome. And the uh, latest version is 9.1, a couple of uh, point releases. And when you want to get started, you're going to want to use this .NET new install to get the latest version of the template. It's ardalis.cleanarchitecture.template. And then when you want to create your own version of this, you'd use .NET new clean arch or clean arc uh, dash O and then your project name, you know, acme.mycoolproject. And that will create your template. So if you go out to NuGet, search for our Dallas Clean Architecture uh, template, you'll find it all here. 9.1.2 was literally just uploaded moments ago. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in Visual Studio real quick. All right, so there was a, uh, an issue with, with MimeKit disconnects that I just fixed. And other than that, it's good to go. So inside of this Clean Architecture template, what you get are four projects that are already laid out in such a way to minimize the likelihood that you're going to have tight coupling between your business logic in your domain model. If you're following domain driven design, all of that is going to live in the core project and the infrastructure code, things that know how to talk to databases or Azure or AWS services or whatever else you might be talking to that's out of process. That stuff all belongs in the infrastructure project, which depends on the core project. So there's no way, for classes in core to depend on that stuff. All this is behind a front end that is just using API endpoints. And specifically, I'm using a package called Fast Endpoints, which I very much recommend. Fast Endpoints is an amazing way to organize your minimal APIs in ASP.NET Core 8 uh, or, or even 6 or 9, right? The latest versions of ASP.NET Core. So if we look at one of these endpoints, you'll see there's a create endpoint for a contributor. And it has associated with it a request, a response, and a validator. So everything you need to work with this endpoint is right here. Inside of this, there's basically a couple methods. First one is to configure what the actual endpoint looks like, what its route is, whether or not it is anonymous, any type of information you want to add to its Swagger documentation, things like that. And then it has a handle method that takes in a request, returns back some response potentially, uh, and, and does, you know, the work inside of here. In this case, I'm leaning on mediator to send commands or queries as appropriate. If we look at these requests, you'll see they're very simple. If we look at the response, it too is very simple. And then the validator is using fluent validation to perform validation checks so that we get good errors inside of our browser or inside of our API client when we hit this endpoint, if we're not passing in valid values. Now, all of that goes into a use cases project and the use cases are set up using CQRS, Command Query Responsibility Segregation. So in the case of a create, we have a command and that command just has the minimal things we need to create a new entity, in this case, a contributor. And there's a handler that does that work. Now, things you'll notice about this handler is it does not include validation logic or logging or a whole lot of other cross-cutting concern code. And that's because by using mediator and using these handlers, we can take advantage of patterns like chain of responsibility and build those things in as behaviors so that we don't have to add them to every handler or every endpoint. Now this is going to work with a repository abstraction that you don't have to write a lot of code for because it's leveraging a NuGet package and it's going to add this to uh, the database and, and then we'll have that available when we do another method. So in a get handler, this is going to use a query. In the case of a query, we just need their key, their ID. And the handler for that is going to use a specification that includes that ID and then use our repository to go fetch that entity and return it back, in this case, using a DTO that's appropriate for the calling code. The infrastructure code is where all of the different database implementation stuff, which in this case is using EF, lives as well as different implementations of how to send email. So in this template, I'm just demonstrating sort of a hello world example of how you can do simple things like send an email in response to some action taking place. For example, the MimeKit email sender is the default that's wired up when you set this up and it will send an email telling you, you know, that something happened. And in the case of what happened, let's look at our domain model. 
where we have this contributor aggregate. A contributor is just, you know, a person that is contributing to a project or whatever. It is an entity. It is also an aggregate. So it has this I aggregate root marker interface attached to it. Repositories will only work with aggregates. They won't work with entities that are not aggregates. It also has some methods for, you know, changing its values and some guards and some other things. Uh, and there is a domain event for when these are deleted so that something can respond when that happens. Now that domain event is actually fired from a service. So down here we have a delete contributor service and it creates and publishes that domain event. And then this handler is going to respond to that event. And so when this handler fires, it's going to send an email. So let's see how we can create our own version of this template and then test it out and verify that it works. So we're going to start a new PowerShell and we're just going to add those two lines that I showed you from the readme file. The first one is going to install the template and I'm installing version 9.1.2 because that's the latest one and it was successful. And then we're going to create our new version of, of the template and we'll call this uh, nimblepros.youtube sample, let's say. And it created it successfully and you can see it's right there and we can jump in there and we can launch it with the solution file. And you're going to see this looks an awful lot like the other project did, except now all the namespaces are correct, right? So it's nimblepros.youtubesample.core and it has, you know, everything else in here as you would expect. Now, if we run this, we see Swagger starts up. We can go in here. We can see a list of our contributors and there's some data here. We can also create new ones and delete them and do all the other CRUD operations. But we can now in Visual Studio do all of that from our web project using this API.http file. So if we do it from here, we can also send a request and we just have to make sure our launch settings are appropriate. 57679 on HTTP, oh, there we go over here. So HTTPS is what we want. And so we can list the contributors and we should see that that's there. We can get a single contributor and we can delete a contributor. So we can come down here and delete this one. We'll send the request. We get a 204 no content, which is what you're supposed to get on a delete. And if we go back to the browser, I'm running Papercut in a Docker container and Papercut is a local test email server. So our email really did send uh, using localhost, but Papercut picked it up and is telling us right here, a contributor with ID one was deleted. If we also then go and look at the actual code that's running. The last thing that I want to show you is that we are getting a lot of good log output here. We're getting all the information about the different commands that are being executed. That's just because I have entity framework set up and logging, but we're also getting information about these endpoints and these commands. So right here, you can see that there is a delete contributor command with contributor ID one. And then you can see we're deleting that contributor. That's because of some logger behavior that I have set up that's making sure that I get logging for every different handler that we execute. So when we say here, we're handling this query, right? That's because of that same logger uh, middleware that's being added. And it's not ASP.NET Core middleware, it's my own middleware or your own middleware that's in the mediator pipeline, right? So these are pipeline behaviors. And so you, you see here is what it says when it starts a query. And then here is what it says when it finishes a query, right? And so you get the, the time that it took for each one of those. Now, obviously you get some of that, you know, wrapped around in ASP.NET Core as well, but you're not always going to be running these things from ASP.NET Core and ASP.NET Core may change how they do things in the next version as they tend to do. So having your own way of doing logging, validation, caching, et cetera, for your request pipeline with commands and queries can be really beneficial and reduce a lot of the boilerplate code that you work. And again, you get all that out of the box with this template. All right, so then the main thing that changed is that we're not using Autofac for wiring up the services in the different modules or projects now. So if we look at program.cs, we've made an effort to simplify this a bit. So at the start, you can see there's some logging that's going to be used when the app starts up. And then we're gonna configure Sarah log to be used as the logger for the app when it's running as well. Then at the top, we're going to set up our web-based things. So things like cookies and fast endpoints. Then we're going to configure mediator. That's actually a method that's down at the bottom of this file. And we're going to add the infrastructure services. And then we're going to add any additional 
you know, things based on what our environment is. So whether we're in dev or production, we might want to use different dependencies. Then we set up the middleware for the app, which is pretty straightforward. We've got some different things we want to show if we are in dev mode versus if we're in production. And then we wire up fast endpoints with Swagger, have some HPS redirection and run the app. Probably in your app, you would also add authorization and authentication middleware as well. Down here, we have some code to seed the database for the sample, to get Mediator up and running, and to show all services that are running. This is another diagnostic uh, utility that you might find useful. Inside of infrastructure, that extension method that wires up the services is right here. And so this is where you can see that we're wiring up our EF core with a SQLite connection and AppDB context, and then the various services for queries and repositories uh, are in here along with pulling in mail server configuration from the app settings.json file here, where you can see we're just talking to localhost 25. So I hope you found this useful and that you'll give this a shot. Again, you can just go install it from nougat.org, look for our Dallas clean architecture template. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you see any issues, by all means, you know, open up an issue or create a pull request on the GitHub repo. Thanks.